In this video, I'm going to show you how to use geometric constraints for activity 5.2a. I'm going to show you how to take the before file, which you already have, access it, and then turn it into the after file, which you see here. Now, in my opinion, even though you may have a printout for this, it's best to zoom in on this as far as possible while still being able to see everything. I also want you to keep in mind that these little icons that you see right here are nothing more than the geometric constraints that are already applied. The first thing you need to do is open up the activity through Word as well as also open up the activity through Inventor. You'll notice the icon for it is an IDW file icon. And if you open Inventor first, which looks like this icon right here, and then double click on this one, it'll open it up correctly. You'll notice that right now it looks like the before file. We want to take and use the geometric constraints to make all of these objects, like this first one, match what it says above the object on the after sheet. In Inventor, this drawing sheet consists of a border around the side of it and a sketch that's been placed on it. I can access those two things by clicking on them in the browser. This is my browser. This also gives me the history of what's been done to the file. In this particular case, I want to either right click on sketch one and edit it or double click on the icon. Once I'm in sketch mode, you'll notice that the tabs up at the top open up a new one. It's a green one and you can see that it stays green no matter what tab I click on. That's not normally there unless I'm in sketch mode. You'll notice that I can finish the sketch over here with the check mark or I can right click and tell it to finish sketch. You'll need to be able to do that to save it unless you don't mind the computer asking you if it can close the sketch before it saves. We're going to mostly work with the constrain panel of the sketch ribbon, but we'll also use the text function from the draw panel. We won't do that until the very end when we add our name. So to make this object perpendicular, I'll zoom in by scrolling down with my mouse wheel and click on it like a button if necessary to pan just to get it where I want it to be. This is dimension, which is a numeric constraint, whereas these 12 options right here are my geometric constraints. I'll use dimension one time, but I'll use the geometric constraints over and over. The two that I won't use for this activity are smooth and symmetric. Here's coincident, meaning points line up together, Here's collinear, which means that lines are in line with each other. Here's concentric, which means that the center of two circles or more share the same point. This is fix, which means that I lock a location and I can also, with a circle, lock the size and location. If I fix the size, then I'm also fixing the location. If I fix the location, I'm simply going to choose the center of the circle and fix where it's located, but the size could still change. This is parallel, making lines parallel, which we'll use for this one. This is perpendicular, making lines set at 90 degrees from each other. Here I'll also have horizontal and vertical, and these can be used to make lines either horizontal, vertical, or I can tell things to be lined up on a horizontal or vertical plane. In this case, I would click the centers to line these circles up in a horizontal plane. All right, let's start with making this one perpendicular. Choose perpendicular, and then remember that whatever I click on first is what will move unless another constraint is already applied to that feature. In this case, if I click on this line, and then this one saying make this line perpendicular to this other line it'll change it but if I go back and look at my word document 
I see that it's not exactly how I want it to be. Notice how this line doesn't cross the text below it. Here, it does. So undo your very good friend, or control Z on the keyboard, will take it back. I can then come back to perpendicular, choose this line first, and then this one. This one asked me to make all three lines parallel to one another. Now be careful with this one. If you select them out of the wrong order, they won't look like the after uh, feature that we're looking for. So I'll choose parallel. And let's start by clicking this one and say it's parallel to this one. And then we can say this one is parallel to either one of these two. Now that's close not quite what we're looking for. Notice the difference. So what I really want is to undo twice. Parallel, we'll say this one to here, and then we'll choose this one to either one of these two. That looks a little bit better. Yep, matches what I'm looking for. Over here, this says dim number three to two inches in diameter. So that means I need to dimension the third circle. Notice I click on the circumference and drag it out, click, and then click on the dimension if it doesn't pop up with a dimension box for you. And I need to make it two inches in diameter. Now it'll default in inches unless you've done something different at the very beginning of all of this. I'll hit enter and it changes it to two inches. Keep in mind that I want this circle to gently cross over the border. Not very far, just slightly. And I also want to see that in the end, they're all fixed in location and size. Well, it does say fix, so that's this button, circles one and two, that's one and two. Since they didn't say location or size, I'm gonna assume both. And that would mean that if I click on the outside or circumference of that circle, it'll fix its location and it'll fix its size. Then I want to tell it to make number three tangent to one and two. But notice what happens if I click on number three and then number two. It moves it in the wrong spot. I can't ever go back to making this tangent and it working properly. So I'll back up twice, do a tangent. I'll start with one tangent to three, and then two tangent to three, and it does it correct. I'll keep going. Remember, what I click on first moves. Tangent, 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 tangent. Keep in mind, if I don't do it in that order, It moves things the wrong way. So if you feel like it doesn't look like it's supposed to, try a different order after you've undone what you've already worked on. We need to fix point C. Now in this case, point C is not referencing the dot next to the C, but rather the center of the circle. We'll fix the point, not the entire circle. So location of this circle stays in place not necessarily the size. Then we'll tell point A, which is the end point up here of this line, to be coincident with the middle of this circle, and the same for point B. It needs to be coincident with the center as well. We'll make all three of these circles concentric. If we notice, the center of those circles is right underneath this E and N in the word concentric. So, that's the one I want to keep in place. I'll click on it second every time. This one is concentric to this one. This little circle is concentric to either one of these two. I want to make these lines collinear. In this case, the line is at this angle. Notice that 
I already have a line at that angle, so I want this one to move over to here. Collinear this line first so that it moves to this one. I want to make these horizontal. This is an easy one. Click, click. And both of those look correct. I want to make these vertical, but be careful. I need to select the first vertical line to be this one. And I'll notice that the triangle changes as well. And if you come over to it, you'll see, try pushing F8. And you'll find that these weird little icons pop up. Remember, they're the geometric constraints that have already been applied. Here, we're saying that this line of the triangle is parallel to this line for these vertical ones. When I make this line, not the center point, but the line vertical, it changes the triangle as well. I'll make the other ones vertical too. And then now I can work on making this equal lateral. So equal button, that geometric constraint is applied. And I'll say, oh, I don't know, how about this one is equal to this one? And then this one is equal to either one of those two. And that looks pretty much like what I want it to. But be careful, again, if you click on the wrong thing at the wrong time, it won't come out correctly. Remember, it changes the shape by changing the size. That is not the same as this. this leg, then this one, this leg, and then either one of those two. Make the circles the same size, well, they're equal, but I want this size circle, not the small one. This size circle, not the small one. The small one must get bigger. So it's the one that changes, here to here. These three circles, need to be placed in a horizontal plane. So I'm going to use the horizontal button. That geometric constraint should be applied to the center of the circles. If I choose this one first and then this one, it'll move them in the wrong order. So again, this one first won't work. But if I choose this one first, it'll move this one up to here. All right. Doesn't matter then which one you click on because I've already applied a geometric constraint to the center one, so it lines them up. Again, I want to walk, oops, I want to walk through making these horizontal. Either one of these two first, and then the top one. Notice in this case, this one must have something applied to it. So, horizontal, I always go with this one, the middle one. This one, the middle one. That leaves me with the space down here to apply my text. Text is over here on the draw panel. Click on it and click in place where you want the text to start. This text window opens. And I can type in my name. In this case, it's going to make it at a 12 point font. So if I just say OK, it comes up really tiny. I'll right click and say OK. And I want it much bigger. Something more like what we see over here with John Doe. So I'll double click on it, open it back up, highlight it. I'm going to bold it and I'm going to change it to 0.4 font. Hit enter and it changes it for me. Now I can click and drag the text where I want it to be. At this point, I'm going to come up here to the inventor button, tell it to save as and do a save copy as. No clicking yet, not until I get to save copy as. Click once. It says, hey, you didn't close the sketch. Can we close it and then continue saving? Sure. It brings up my Save As dialog box, and I'll say that I want to save this as 5.2a, finished. You come up with some name that makes sense to you. 
print this file so that it's best fit. 